Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We are also live on Music99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on CSET geography. We will be focusing on global warming and climate change. I am Bijana Jones Mullins, your teacher for today. So, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying Happy Teacher's Day to my fellow colleagues. Continue being the beacon of hope in today's system and I hope you have a wonderful day. Our objectives for today are one, describing the greenhouse effect. Two, examining the ways in which human activities influence climate change. Three, compare the consequences of climate change in the Caribbean with those in the United Kingdom. And finally, to compare measures to reduce the effects of climate change in the Caribbean with those used in the United Kingdom. First of all, we want to start off by differentiating weather and climate, since we're on the topic of climate change. Persons tend to use these two interchangeably. First, weather is the short-term changes in atmospheric conditions or variables, just such as temperature and rainfall. Weather, therefore, can change rapidly. So, for example, weather is what is happening outside right now. So, depending where you live, if you notice that outside is sunny, then we say that the weather is sunny, or it is overcast or cloudy. Climate, on the other hand, is a long-term state of atmospheric conditions or variables like rainfall and temperature. So, climate occurs over seasons or longer periods, which are usually at least 30 years. We can therefore say the main difference between weather and climate is that of time. Now we go to the first objective. What is the greenhouse effect? We're going to watch a video and I want you to focus on these two questions. First, what is the greenhouse effect? And secondly, I want you to tell me three guesses that you noticed in this video. Our climate is changing, and temperatures in general are increasing on the planet. Sea levels are rising, and the ice is melting at the North and South Poles. One reason for this is the greenhouse effect. But what is the greenhouse effect? A greenhouse is normally something useful. It helps us grow things like tomatoes out of season. That's because it's nice and warm inside a greenhouse. The sunlight enters and visible light penetrates the glass. This is partly absorbed by the plants in the soil and partly reflected on the outside as invisible heat radiation. As a result, temperatures rise inside the greenhouse. The planet Earth obtains warmth in a similar fashion, which is fortunate because otherwise we could not survive. Without the natural greenhouse effect, Temperatures on our planet would be around minus 18 degrees Celsius and not the average 15 degrees Celsius above freezing. Sunlight penetrates the gas layer of the atmosphere. It's partly absorbed and partly reflected, just like in a greenhouse. Small particles in the air ensure that a percentage of the reflected radiation is sent back to Earth. However, humans cause a lot of pollution by producing large amounts of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The small particles increase in number, and the result is just like a greenhouse where the glass is too thick. So an increased amount of radiation is sent back to Earth and the heat is unable to escape, causing temperatures to rise constantly on our planet. Okay, so based on that video, what can we say is the greenhouse effect? It is the process by which the atmosphere warms the earth by trapping radiation or heat energy 
And secondly, I asked you to observe three gases. So if you remembered carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, nitrous oxides, chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, good job. Now, the atmosphere acts like the glass of a greenhouse. The sun rays hit the atmosphere and some are reflected. Some of these rays pass through and reach the earth and the earth warms. The greenhouse effect makes earth warm enough to live on. So students, the greenhouse effect is indeed a good thing. However, it becomes a problem when these gases trap excess heat and causes earth's temperature to rise. Global warming is the increase in the average atmospheric temperature. So we want to make this clear from now. We're going to be talking about global warming and how it influences climate change. Persons, again, tend to confuse global warming and climate change. So climate change is actually a product of global warming. We move on to human activities that influence climate change. On our diagram, some of the activities include deforestation. We cut down trees for agricultural purposes or to build roads or for tourist attractions or even to build houses. We also spray, use aerosol sprays containing CFCs, which also cause damage to the ozone. Vehicles usually ex emit exhaust such as, uh, that are, sorry, vehicles usually emit exhaust and this also contributes to pollution. When fossil fuels are burnt, such as oil and coal, these also cause damage to the earth. We also see pollution happening from factories that emit waste. Other human activities that also affect global warming include combustion. When we burn coals and fossil fuels, as we said before, deforestation. Methane is also another important gas which causes adverse effects. Methane is released when we use landfills. Now landfills are sites where we bury garbage and these of course emit methane. When we practice agricultural activities such as the growing of rice, methane is also expelled. When we grow livestock, so for those of us who love to eat meat, livestock, especially cattle farming, releases a lot of methane to the atmosphere. Other gases also cause damage as I said before, we also have ozone from car exhaust and when we spray CFCs from aerosols. Now, we need to look at these changes as these will continue into the future and the implications they have today. We will first look at temperature. Now, scientists have come up with models where they use these to predict what will happen in the future. Now, based on these diagrams that I have here, mean changes in the annual mean surface temperature for 2071 to 2099, that seems a far away from now, with respect to 1961 to 1989, which are those two pictures at the bottom, are simulated by models. It means that, or it is projected that, the Caribbean temperatures will continue to increase to 2099. It also suggests that the Caribbean will warm by 1 to 5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. So these are predictions made by scientists. Now, Jamaica is showing some of the same trends on the globe. Temperatures are increasing, right? So from 1992 to 2008, our temperatures have increased at a rate of 0.1 degree per decade. Rainfall has also become very variable in recent years. We have been experiencing more droughts and floods. Sea levels are believed to be rising also at a global rate. Our next picture looks at the indicators of a warming world. In other words, what are the telltale signs that we can see that our world is warming? we can see that there is a decrease in our glaciers and snow cover. And this is due to the fact that we have less precipitation, right? So we'll have less snow cover and glaciers. We also see that humidity is increasing. 
as temperatures rise, humidity will increase as there's more evaporation taking place. We also see that we have a decrease in ice sheets. These ice sheets that are melting will also contribute to the rise in sea level. Rainfall patterns have also changed. If we look at this map, we will notice that it shows the severe drought that occurred or was common in 2016. In every month of 2016, at least 12% of global land was in severe drought, based on a climate study done in the same year. This indicates that trends vary widely by regions and over time. The warming temperature can cause other changes, including changes in rainfall. The area shaded red in the diagram indicates that there is a decrease in rainfall, while the blue shaded areas indicate that those places are wet. Now, we have been talking about the increase in temperature. Now, this increase in temperature also causes an increase in our global sea levels. If we look on this diagram, we will notice a line graph that shows that since the mid 19th century, progressing onward, we have been seeing an increase in sea level rise. During the 20th century, there is an average increase of 4.8 to 8.8 .8 inches per century. And this is due to the expansion of the water that has melted from the mountain glaciers we talked about before and the small ice caps. There's also new evidence that shows that the rate of sea level rise may be at a greater rate than we originally predicted or anticipated. You would have also known or noticed around you that we are seeing more extreme weather patterns. Hurricanes are not only the extreme measure of climate we have seen changes in. In fact, since 1970, the number of heat waves has increased and widespread increases have occurred in the number of warm nights. And I'm sure you at home can attest to this, as in these nights have become so warm and it's not even summer yet, but we are really feeling the heat. The extent of these regions affected by droughts has also increased. Generally, the numbers of heavy daily precipitations will vary. However, evidence suggests that there are substantial increases in intensity and duration since the 1970s. These changes will continue into the future. We continue to look at the impact of sea level rise. In this photograph, we have a projected land loss from sea level rise at Hope Bay in Portland. The area shaded blue shows that if the sea level continues to rise up to three meters, that area beyond the blue line will be flooded. And you'll notice on our photograph that we have houses there. In fact, we know that as geographers, many persons tend to settle along coastal areas due to the topography of the area. Now, what this means is that a lot of towns and cities will be lost due to the rising sea level. The Caribbean sea level may rise and it will be higher than any other region because we are very close to the equator. Hurricanes and storms will also be more intense with higher rainfall rates and increased maximum winds. And we know the damage that these storms can cause. There's no doubt, students, that climate change is affecting our lives and touching every area. We will now look at some of the areas. Our health, yes. Climate change affects our health. There has been health-related deaths. There's the spread of infectious diseases. Air quality is compromised because if we look in areas that experience smog, if you have asthma or other respiratory illnesses, then this can be an issue for you. We also look at how agriculture is impacted. Agriculture is impacted through crop yields. So if farmers can't get to grow crops due to lack of rainfall, then we'll find out that our crop yields will be very low. 
irrigation will be in demand because of the lack of water, they need to find ways to be able to water their crops. They'll also need to exercise pest management and control. Our forest also is impacted as well. The forest health is impacted, its composition and productivity. Again, if there's less rainfall, then of course this will impact vegetation. Our water sources students are also impacted. We see changes in precipitation, whether it may be snow or rainfall. Our water comp quality is also affected. Example, the saltiness of our water and our water supply is also affected. When we look on coastal areas, these areas are also affected. Coastal areas can be eroded or inundated. There's also the cost that is attached to protecting these vulnerable lands. If we look at the Palisado Strip, we can see those boulders which constitute a seawall. I'm sure it was a costly project to do so. And finally, on this diagram, we look at the wildlife. You can see a turtle, and where he's at is most likely a coral reef. Now, coral reefs will also lose their diversity, and also species or animals will also migrate as an impact of climate change. Climate change is affecting our everyday lives. We look at our farmers in St. Elizabeth, and they have noticed a shortening of the early growing season and increasing prevalence of droughts during these months. And that is because of the decreased rainfall, which will affect their agricultural yields. Next, we will look at a video showing the impacts that our farmers face. Courtesy of TVJ Portland News, of farmers course. farmers are this evening crying out for help to stem the huge losses from what they say is a worsening drought affecting the parish. And even as the government moves to find solutions to the crippling drought across the island, the farmers are suggesting that Portland could be part of the solution. Here again is TVJ's Krista Campbell. It's a farmer's worst nightmare. Planting, but either reaping very little or nothing at all. Farmers in Portland say the island-wide drought is to blame, and they lament that as it gets worse each year, so do their losses. Some of the tomato trees, they just bear and they start right before they even fall. The trees are burning down, the sweet peppers are very small. The, 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 the variety of sweet peppers that I plant is a hybrid and they should be big like, one would be like half a pound or something, but no, they are weighing less than two ounces because of the sun. The farmers say if they get help with a proper irrigation system, some of their cash crops like pak choy, tomatoes and sweet peppers would survive and grow faster. If we, if we have large irrigation, say for instance through your kalalo, you can reap your kalalo three times a week. You know, as to now you can't reap it not even once a week because there's not enough water. And that again is another major concern for the farmers who contend that with so many rivers and springs across Portland, the parish should not have such water problems. In fact, as the government pushes plans to construct another reservoir to help ease the country's water woes, one farmer has given his suggestion. I would say to the Minister of Water to invest in water. Invest in some more reservoirs, some more dig some more wells all over the place. Put up some more pump house. You can supply water maybe as far as to Kingston. Meanwhile, until help arrives, Duke Cuthbert says he's trying to source his own water pump and pipes to take water to his farm. The, the river is closed, so after those go down there and joke the water and with manually. And, and that take a lot of time. And because of that, then I can't produce as much as I would want to produce. Because if you notice a flow, about a half an acre over there, and I can't even start to plant it. Because the time when I learn to plant is in the early morning. And whatever I plant, I have to be water in that time. Campbell. So students, based on the video, we can see the plight of the farmers. There is less rainfall causing drought conditions, so irrigation becomes a problem. We continue to look at how climate change impacts our health. Where there have been reported cases of dengue, both affected by temperature and rainfall with the warming of early months of the year, bringing the earlier onset of reported dengue cases and epidemics. And if we look back into last year, we can recall the cases of dengue that we have been experiencing. 
Other health impacts will also be affected directly. Example, if there are water temperatures, then there will be heat stroke. Or indirectly, where persons can suffer from malnutrition because of food scarcity. Food scarcity, why students? Remember, if there is not enough rainfall, then crops can't be grown, so there will be food shortages. Coastal ecosystems will also be affected. Here we have an example of how coral reefs have been bleached. And this has been caused by higher than normal sea surface temperatures here in the Caribbean in 2005. Now, what are the implications of this coral bleaching? Well, we know that coral reefs are not only habitats for fish, but also the fishermen get a livelihood from coral reefs. It also serves as a tourist attraction. So if our coral reefs are bleached, then what will our tourists or visitors come to see? Climate change is affecting our lives. Here we have a table that shows past hurricanes, flood and rain events. We can also add Hurricane Maria, which happened in 2017, and even to this date, Puerto Rico has still not recovered fully. Hurricanes are a recurrent threat. They have a significant impact on the economy and cost an economy into billions of dollars of loss. We must change how we live. Different sectors are affected by climate change. First, we look at agriculture. The impact, as we have been discussing so far, is that there's varying productivity. So we spoke about low crop yields, and this is due to flood events and drought. But how can we adapt, which is seen in the third column? We need to, find, we need to protect agriculture and find sustainable practices. Tourism is another sector that is affected. It is impacted because there'll be less demand and there is a warmer world. So we'll have less visitors coming. One way to do that is to have diversified tourism. So instead of being overly dependent on one economic activity or one type of tourism product, it is good to diversify so that there is no loss. Fisheries are also affected. There'll be less supply of fish, and you have warmer oceans and rising sea levels. Again, one way to combat this is to diversify the livelihood. Water is also affected as well. There'll be less rainfall. When we have less rainfall, there'll be less water for us to use for domestic purposes or industrial purposes. We can combat this by efficient usage of harvesting water or saving water, water storage. Let's look at infrastructure. There's damage to coastal infrastructure from storm surges. So those large waves that come in when we have hurricanes, those will also damage not only coastal infrastructure such as roads, but also houses as well and buildings. How can we adapt to this? We can do vulnerability mapping or zoning. In other words, we can find which areas are safe to build before doing so. Health is the final area that is also affected. As we mentioned in a previous slide, there are more dengue cases because of warmer temperatures. Now, how can we adapt to this? We have epidemic alert systems and we do have that working here in Jamaica. But how has climate change impacted the world? Or how can it if we look on future projections? If we look at deaths, for example, there's an estimated 250,000 deaths that can occur from diseases by 2030. And we're looking at things such as malaria, malnutrition, diarrhea, and even heat stress that is caused by heat waves. We'll also see our vector-borne diseases like malaria and dengue those will increase because of there is more humidity and heat. And in the center, we see that if there is this four degrees Celsius temperature rise, then these are the different scenarios that could play out. Hunger and famine can also increase students as food production is destabilized by drought. 
it can be very costly. It can cost us two to actually four billion dollars. And we're talking about US billion dollars by 2030. We could even die. Seven million persons are projected to die from air pollution if our temperatures continue to rise. And finally, pollution and pollen seasons will increase and we'll find that we come down with more allergies and asthma attacks. What are some of the social and economic impacts of this climate change? We mentioned in a previous slide that in Portland, if the sea levels continue to rise, then towns or cities may be replaced. Now, this comes at a cost. There's the cost of adapting coastal areas to rising sea levels. We also look at the loss of the capacity to work due to heat. Now, my colleagues can attest that we have been experiencing warmer than usual temperatures in the classroom. And we know that these conditions are not conducive to learning to the students or to ourselves. Fresh water supply will also be in short supply in some areas. Diseases will spread because of these high temperatures. We'll have extreme meteorological phenomena that will cause widespread poverty. The prices of basic foodstuffs and consumer goods will rise. And we see that happen in students. Whether you go to the market or your parents go to the market, we know that when certain crops are out of season, then the prices go up because there's a demand for it. There are also shrinking producti productivity of harvest. No. Our third objective requires us to look at the effects of climate change in the Caribbean and the United Kingdom. For the Caribbean, we'll focus on Jamaica. Now, in Jamaica, average temperatures could increase between 1.4 and 5 degrees Celsius, while in the United Kingdom, there is an above 1.2 degrees pre-industrial levels and a 0.8 degrees Celsius increase since 1961 to 1980. In the Caribbean, there's an estimate of 3.1 millimeters per year rise in sea level. While in the United Kingdom, there has been a 16 centimeter increase in mean sea level since 1990. There's a projected 10 to 20 degrees, sorry, percent decrease in rainfall. In the United Kingdom, there are indications of heavy rainfall through hard to quantify. And finally, in the Caribbean, there are more droughts and increased summer temperatures. While in the United Kingdom, 10 to 25% chance of heat waves have been noticed in comparison to a less than 10% chance each year a few decades ago. If you have questions on what we have done so far, you can send them in on our various platforms and I will see if I can answer in the final segment. School's Not Out will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Get moving. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move, mobilize, flex exercise. Jamaica Move, Jamaica Move, Jamaica Move, mobilize, flex exercise. Come on, take a selfie, breathe. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. on TVJ. Hi, we haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays. Get Moving! Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move! Mobilize! Flex exercise! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Mobilize! Flex exercise! 
Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. on TVJ. Hi! We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Get Moving! Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move! Mobilize, flex exercise. Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Mobilize, flex exercise. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out. CSEC and Cape Lessons live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out live CSEC and Cape Lessons here on TVJ. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out. CSEC and Cape Lessons live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out live CSEC and Cape Lessons here on TVJ. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. Today, we have been discussing CSEC geography looking at global warming and climate change. Now, before the break, we were looking at the effects of climate change in the Caribbean and the United Kingdom. We now look at the measures that these two areas can take to reduce climate change. Let's look on the Caribbean first. In Jamaica, for example, there's a partnership between USAID to strengthen the energy and agriculture industries. There are also collaborations with 25 representatives from academia, the private sector, utilities, and six government agencies. We also practice renewable energy, for example, the Wickton wind farms. There are also improved relationships between farmers and RADA. Let's look at the United Kingdom and see what measures they have been putting in place. There are legislations for net zero greenhouse gas emission, and this should be achieved by the year 2050. There is also a committee on climate change. They also encourage low carbon farming practices, especially when it comes to using a particular fertilizer. They also reduce food waste and consumption of the most carbon intensive food, such as beef and dairy. Now, before I go on, we, let's go back to Jamaica. Jamaica has also signed the Paris Agreement, and this agreement works with small island developing states like Jamaica and help these countries to reduce the impacts that are felt from climate change. Now, let's test your knowledge. 
Let's see how well you have been listening so far. We'll go to some multiple choice questions. Now students, I encourage you to use the process of elimination when you're approaching these questions. No, I don't want you to use when in doubt you see. I want you to eliminate. So let's look at the first question. Which of the following features is the most important difference between weather and climate? Is it A, time, B, rainfall, C, location, or D, temperature? If your answer is A, you are correct. We move on to the second question. Which of the following sources of energy is least likely to harm the environment? Is it A, nuclear, B, solar, C, oil, or D, natural gas? If you answered B, solar, you are correct. And finally, which of the following actions can help to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases? One, increase use of chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. Two, increase use of solar power. Three, reduction in the use of fossil fuels. Is it A, one and two only? B, one and three only? C, two and three only? Or is it D? One, two, and three. If you answered C, you are correct. Hooray! Now, students, our final video appeals to us to do something about climate change. Let's have a look. So, students, in the video, we see that climate change is our responsibility. What are some of the things that we can do on an individual level? Well, we could take into account how much electricity we use. We can turn off lights when they're not in use. We can unplug appliances. We can limit simple things as going into the refrigerator every minute. We can also take steps in conserving water so that we have sufficient in times of drought. What are some other things that you can think of that we can make in order to combat climate change? Now, let's briefly recap today's lesson. So far, we were able to define global warming, greenhouse effect, and climate change. But sorry, that's all for today for C6, geography, global warming, and climate change. We hope you grasp some of the points that we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on GNN Today at 4 p.m. and in Schools Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVG. It will also be on video and demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I'm Brijana Jones-Mullins. Pleasant viewing, stay safe, stay in, and remember to wash your hands. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. COVID-19 Tip Protect yourself and others from getting sick by watching